Welcome, everyone, to episode 293 of Just Joshing. I am your host, Joshua Pantelaresco. I write stuff in podcasts, too. Today, I continue the Aurora series with Edward Willett. Ed is a podcaster as well. His podcast, The World Shapers Podcast, is an Aurora finalist this year, but he's also an amazing writer as well. Uh, his book, World Shaper, which is where his podcast is based on, is out now. You should definitely take a look at his current series and other works as well. Great guy. We have a really fun little conversation coming ahead. But before we get to that, I want to know what you guys think. Um, I uh, I really got a cool chance to talk to uh, Lance Bond. Lance is uh, the cover artist, also interior designer, illustrator of The Cloud Diver. We got some really cool stuff being planned here as I get to not closer to announcing the release date of the series. Uh, I really love that cover. That cover is just amazing. And... Uh, I didn't know some of the people that had already seen it um, from his end. And it's going to be really cool in the next month or so to reveal a few more surprises as time goes on. I have an audiobook announcement as well i got to get into, but I can't quite do it just yet. But I will talk about that soon. And beyond that, well, hey, this was definitely, um, it's definitely been a wild September. I can't wait till October. Lots of cool things are about to happen, and I just can't wait. But for now... Let's get to our conversation, shall we? This episode of Just Joshing is sponsored by Indie Imprint. Indie Imprint supports creators by creators. Whether you are writing a book or creating a video game, Indie Imprint works with its clients to produce, edit, and present their projects to the world. For more information, check out their website at www.indieimprint.com. Claudio Mergan is the author of two novels, The Decadence of Our Souls and Water Entanglement. The Decadence of Our Souls is a cross between a spiritual book and a thriller. And in Water Entanglement, Claudio delivers a well-written, convincing snapshot of water scarcity into the future. What will you do when you realize that water has memory, water is alive, and that the time for her to awaken is now? The novels are available as an ebook or in print through Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or any other major bookstore. The audiobook will be available soon. For more info, look at ClaudioMorgan.com. Okay. Now, Skype has its, um, has its limitations. Um, like, sometimes, sometimes it's great. Like, sometimes it's actually really, really good. But sometimes, I, I tried doing an interview two weeks ago with a guy in uh, California, and we, we just would go in and out, in and out all the time. It just, yeah. some, sometimes Skype is just an evil overlord. As I turn the recorder on, on Skype. I, I think it's just the, uh, just the internet in general. If you get it, how many pipes it has to go through before it gets where it's that's, going. That's right, because we all know the internet is a series of tubes. That's exactly. Just, that's right, that's right. That's an old joke for people who may not, may or may not remember um, the Bush administration, which sometimes makes it this makes feels like a dream compared to this, which is weird. But that's okay. How you doing today, man? I'm good. Yeah. So first and foremost, uh, I know that like I I started checking out your podcast. So why why did you start your podcast? If you don't mind my asking. Uh, my background is in journalism. I, I, that's what my degree is in. And I started as a newspaper reporter and uh, then eventually editor in my 20s. So I've done a lot of interviewing of people over the years and, and continuing on a freelance basis. I do, I've done a lot of interviewing of people for newspaper articles. And then I hosted my own TV show for a while, a call-in computer show of all things here in Regina for almost 10 years. And uh, I've done quite a bit of radio. I was had my own radio program on community radio here for a while too. And I thought, you know, maybe I should just take all those skills and bend them towards talking to other writers because I love talking about the nuts and bolts of writing, and so that gave me a focus, and away I went. And, well, of course, it, it tied in with the new book because the, the podcast is called The World Shapers. Yes. And the first book in my new series is called World Shaper, and the series is called World Shapers, so <laughs> there's, well, there's a certain synergy there. Well, well, well it, it definitely doesn't hurt the marketing end of things, that's for sure. But, I mean... No, it's it, it, it. The thing about podcasting, right, is everybody ha, has a good podcast has a has a good focus. All right, the nuts and bolts of world building, which is what you you do, is a really really interesting take on a writing podcast because writing podcasts, a lot of them are very business of writing. And there's nothing wrong with yeah. that. There's nothing wrong with that at all. But there's a lot of those, and you don't have the. Um, 
I think I, you don't have the variety, whereas world building is always just fun because everyone has their own approach to like, you know, building their worlds and how they construct things. And it's always neat. It's almost like watching how the Lego blocks are made, you know? Well, it's not really just world building. It's, it's re- literally about the writing process, the creative process from uh, yeah. getting the idea to outlining to uh, um, the first vision process to the editorial process, all of that stuff. And then, um, so the world building would be an even narrower focus, I think, if you just focused on that. But I've tried to expand it to the entire like creative process, process. And just to find out how writers do what it is that they do. Which, again, is still it's still a good fo- like it's still a really good focus because um, we all have again we all have our own techniques which work for us. Um, so, what have you learned? Because you've interviewed a few, quite a few people at this point. Yeah, I think I'm uh, got number. Well, I. The number I've interviewed, the number that have gone live, is different. I think I'm at episode 27 as far as the number that have gone live, but I've got three, I think, already recorded that'll be coming out. So about 30 people that I've already talked to. Um, the similarities and the differences are all interesting. The you know we all almost all of us who write in science fiction fantasy and everybody I talk to is is in the field, uh, at least. If not in the core part of the field, they are at least writing something that falls within science fiction and fantasy. Um, and almost all of us got started as readers. So that's one thing that I think pretty much every writer of science fiction has in common is that they started reading the stuff and they fell in love with it. One or two that came in through comics or media yeah, and then moved into the written side. But most of us started as readers. But then the differences are interesting too. The level of detail that people go into in their outlining, for example, ranges from um, people like uh, Kandara Blake who basically – almost wings it entirely when she has the idea she just writes to see what happens to peter v brett who writes 150 page outlines and then just fills in the you know just fills it out um, and that's always interesting for me because as a writer you sometimes think that uh, the way you do it is the only way it can be done and when you hear about how other people work it can expand your horizons and sometimes give you some ideas for how you might approach your work a little differently and maybe uh, solve some of the problems that uh, found because the other thing about writing is that all of us are solving the same problems uh, characterization plot and, and well even marketing right we're all working on the same problem so hearing how other people have solved problems can sometimes give you some hints on how you can better solve your problems and we all have problems <laughs> well, well absolutely we all have strengths and weaknesses too so and the really cool thing about doing like podcasts like i've done a lot of interviews and uh you learn an awful lot about the people you're interviewing you you can sometimes you can offer help to people that that may need like a little bit of advice and they can help you too and uh it's 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 a very I, I, that's the thing i enjoy about podcasting is you get that chance to hear people a piece of a person's story because no matter what they give you you learn something about you learn something about them and you can and you can uh you can take something away from it every time yeah that's certainly what i found and so i I'm glad that uh, listeners enjoy it, and as far as I can tell, that and the, the authors all seem to appreciate the podcast uh, that have been on it. Um, but I, it's also, to a certain extent, it's it's just me talking about what I want to talk about <laughs> and having fun doing it. But that's but that's really key. Um, we like the one thing about today, like just if you look at the world in general, the demand for content. If it's not infinite, it's very high to always have new things to come see and explore and do and the thing is if you're going to do something like a podcast or if you're going to do something like write a book or if you're going to do something like create us music you pa- i think it's the best stuff is the stuff you enjoy it's when you're at your absolute best because if you're not having fun the audience can hear it right and if you're having fun you're actually encouraging everybody who listens to what you're doing to do the same thing I hope so. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I I tend to oh I I tend to believe that like that's how it works. I think people can I think people can feel can feel um your enthusiasm can feel what you're doing, and if you're genuine, people respond to it. I, I, that's just my opinion. I I may I may know nothing, but uh, it it it, well, it seems to work there, out. There's the old joke, of course, that uh, you know if you can fake sincerity, then. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> really got to be. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah, I mean, the, the fake it to you. I, I, I think, I think um, the, the the counter to that is uh, you can fool some some of the people some of the time, but you can't fool all the people all the time. Sooner or later, I think y- you, um, 
you slip up if you're not yourself. And and that's and when that happens, you lose your credibility. But I mean, I'm really happy that you that you've um, found it. So do you have like a master plan to go forever and ever with this, or do you just are you just gonna do it for as long as it's fun? Um, I don't see myself running out of people to interview, especially since I only do one every two weeks. So I I've only change that for one month because I was so successful at getting interviews I felt I had to catch up so I wasn't pushing them too far off in the future so that's only like well if I do every two weeks 26 authors a year and that barely scratches the surface and there's always new authors coming along and I try to step outside like certainly I've I've made a point of reaching out to people that I particularly enjoyed or people that I knew already through you know conventions and things like that that's where I started uh, but now I'm starting to um you know, get people suggesting authors to look at that I might not have thought of. I have an, an author coming up named Shelley Adina, who a friend of mine who's a, my wife is an engineer, and this is a college friend of hers who's also an engineer. And she loved the steampunk novels that Shelley was writing, and I'd never heard of her, but I read one and I enjoyed it. And so I, I talked to her, but she's coming not really from the core science fiction and fantasy world at all, but she's writing these great steampunk novels. Because the other thing she writes is Amish romance, which nice. I would never have. I would never have talked to somebody who wrote that if I hadn't, you know, reached a little outside of the core. If, if, if you keep doing this, like I, when I started my show, it was once a week. That, that was it. I found that as I kept doing it, I kept getting more demand for interviews than I could possibly fill. Even now, I am always at least at this point six to ten interviews ahead, and I do a show twice a week. So I, yeah, and I don't see myself doing that because, first of all, they're our our podcasts uh, and I'm doing complete uh, transcripts of them oh wow so, uh, yeah it takes uh, I mean I have an automated service but it still takes three or four hours to edit that into shape and more if you've got a bad connection <laughs> oh absolutely no I I, 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 under, I understand I understand what I understand the um, what's the term the, like the, the limitation there but uh, like you will never have an issue with interviews like ever no. ever um You'll 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 find you'll find that you'll have more demand as time goes on, and as you have more demand, I mean, it'll be your comfort zone what you can do. I I can do two episodes a week. I'm comfortable with that. I will never do three. It's too much, but two is good. I can do two. So yeah, and it's you know because I'm not making any money at it, and I'm a full time freelancer, so my time is at writing is something I have to guard and make sure that I'm working on the. Oh actual writing projects that actually pay me money so no no and you know what and that's and that's fair i mean look, look i mean i mean writing writing's your your first love and it's also your, how you make your living so if you're i mean this is a like uh, maybe, maybe hobby's not quite a strong enough word but it's definitely it's a side interest for sure not your main you know, your main goal or your main focus i mean it all it all fits in with what i do i guess i think of it primarily as uh, it's marketing and it's also um, networking. I mean, because when I'm talking to authors I've never talked to before, but the next time I'm at a convention and I see them, then I, I can say, "Hi, I'm Ed Willett, and I talked to you on the World Shapers." And oh, hi, and, you know. So you're you're making connections all the time when you're talking to people on, uh, as I'm sure you found, uh, connecting with people that you know otherwise you would never have said boo to. So um, it's it's all it's all worthwhile. Oh no! It, I I don't regret. It. Like I always say this when I talk to people about my podcast is I get to meet amazing people like yourself that do incredible things all the time. How can I not enjoy what I'm doing? I mean, it's awesome. Um, I've I figured out how to. I am actually getting paid now for doing this podcast. It's not a ton of money at this point, but it's it's now become part of my income, which is really cool. Um, but. Uh, but uh, even so, I mean, I, I, I did it for free for a long time because I really enjoy just meeting just so many cool people doing so many cool things. I, I love it. Then that's just me. But uh, my question then is, all right, uh, you've done 30 interviews. 27 of them have come out. Of the 27, do you have, a, do you have one that you felt like really clicked? Like, like, what, like, what, like one you're like, I'm really proud I did this episode. Is that, do you have one of those yet? Um. I'm proud of all of them. I don't think any of them have gone uh, badly. Mm. <laughs> They've all gone well. Uh, some went longer. Uh, uh, normally I do an hour, and Orson Scott Card did two hours because he likes to talk. Yes. Um, and that's one of my most popular ones, um, of course, as you'd expect. Yep. Uh, um, actually, the most popular one is Larry Correa, who's uh, got way more downloads than anybody else. Um, 
but I, you know, I get so I, I have some big names like that, and I have some smaller names, and but I've enjoyed talking. There's not one of them I think where I finished it and I thought, ooh, that didn't go well, or one that I finished and I thought that was particularly spectacular. I think they've been a fairly steady uh, level of uh, of quality, both in what I get the guests to say and the way I ask the questions. I just I've just been happy with them. Uh, no, that's cool. So. I mean, good luck by way in Aurora. Congratulations. So, oh, yeah, you too. <laughs> yes. I, 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 listen, if you kick my butt, I have no shame to say I lost to Ed Willett. I can, I can live with that. I can totally live with that. You know, um, but uh, so good luck on that. So how are things going with, with, with your World Shaper series? Is it, are things progressing well? Are you into the wins? Where, how is the second book coming along? Uh, the second book is done and in the hands of the publisher. The uh, arcs are out and in the hands of reviewers. Um, the way they're timing it is that book one, World Shaper, which came out last September, is coming out in mass market paperback in August. And they've even changed the cover slightly on it so that it looks more of a piece with book two, uh, the, the font and on the cover and then the second book is called Master of the World it comes out in September so the paperback will come out you got a month and then if people have found the paperback and they're looking for the second book it'll be right there in trade paperback mm -hmm. and also coming out in audiobook at the, at, at the same time which is unlike World Shaper where the audiobook came out a few months later so hopefully it builds um, I've turned in the um, and had approved the uh, proposal for the third book just uh, so I think that's going to go ahead and then we'll see how long it goes after that. I mean, people need people need to read it. That would help a lot. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it would. By the way, I am jealous of that title. That is an amazing title, Master of the World. That's that's fantastic. Well, I stole it from Jules Verne because uh, that's the name of one of his books. And the reason it's stolen from Jules Verne is uh, because the whole World Shaper series is based on this idea that there are this labyrinth of shaped worlds, and the people who shape them live inside these worlds that they shaped. Uh, there's the whole backstory to that uh, but my main character is traveling from world to world to try to save them from this adversary who's kind of took her world away from her and so each world will be it's basically like a novelist novelist living inside their own worlds these shapers and the second world she comes to was shaped by somebody who really really liked jules verne and has styled himself within his own world as master of the world um and so that gave me the title and it also gives me all this great vernian technology there's you know flying machines and uh, submarines and, and uh, floating islands and all that kind of stuff from Jules Verne. This series must be such a kick for you to write because it's, it's almost like it's satisfying like like you, like your your fandom as much as it is be your creativity. It was an opportunity and the reason I crafted this story, I mean this whole thing was built around the idea of being able to write books any kind of book I could think of, I could fit within this series. It's it's one of those I think it's one of those uh, concepts that like uh, like Doctor Who, right? That's got to be the best fictional setup in the world because you can tell any kind of story you want within the context of the Doctor Who universe uh, because of the you know anywhere in time and space. Well, uh, I, I I think Doctor Who is definitely the greatest television concept of all time. It's one of the greatest ones. Because, exactly. Yeah, I. I all time? That's tough because okay, I okay for me, I think of stuff like Batman, who's also a really elastic character. Um, and I think I just think of just some of the other archetypes in fiction. It's up there. I, I'll give it to you. It's up there. I'm not sure it's number one, but it's up there. Yeah. Well, not so much. It has not. I'm not even thinking about the character or the or anything like that. It's just the fact that they came up, probably almost inadvertently, but they have a concept which allows you to tell to set a story in any kind of world that you want to set a story in. Absolutely. Uh, the original Star Trek actually had some of that too because it was very much a different world every week. And, you know, you've got your Old West stories in there sometimes and things like that. So my next one, like this one is Vernian. Yeah. Book three is set in a world which has um, werewolves and vampires. Nice. So it's that kind of a world. And book four, if it goes ahead, will tentatively going to be a film noir gangster ridden kind of a place and so the, even the level of technology changes from world to world and um, the, the ones that I've mentioned in passing that exist that we won't see but in the first book when one of the characters pops out of that world who then goes to tell my main character what's going on he just came out of a Shakespearean world which would have been fun to write except I don't think I could do a whole book in iambic pentameter so <laughs> <laughs> It would be fun if you had a character, one character that did that, though. 
Just one. one of the best, there's a book I read, uh, Harry Turtle Dove. Uh, yeah. I can't remember the title off the top of my head, but it's you know one of his alternate history, and it was set in a world in which the Spanish Armada succeeded and captured England, and one of the main characters is William Shakespeare, so it's full of Elizabethan theater and full of faux Shakespeare, because Shakespeare actually helps get Elizabeth back on the throne and throw the, <laughs> throw the Spanish out. I wish I could remember the name of it. Oh God, I, I want to know, because I, rel- I like Turtle Dove, right? But I don't, I, don't know which, I don't know which one you're talking about either. <laughs> I can't remember the title, but you could easily find it with a little uh, search. Yeah, yeah, I will. I definitely will. That sounds so cool. Um, and he did a very creditable job of uh, faux Shakespeare. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, well, I mean, that's a cool thing. Like, you have a you have a series. Of, let's say, like, you ever heck, you can even do like modern offers. Like, you do a Robert Sawyer based world, or you could do a nice, or, or if you want to go a little older, like Roger Zelazny. That would be really cool. But yeah, abs- absolutely anything is possible. And yeah. The the series is open ended. I know where it's going. I know what the end point is. Um, but getting there, I can take as long as uh, the publisher is willing to let me. Well, that, which is which is which is a great thing. Cause, uh, I don't feel this is like when I look at sometimes a like a science fiction or fantasy series, and I'm looking when you get to books like six, seven, eight, nine. Like when you get like deep into a series, sometimes you can you can see and and I think it's just this fatigue. An author just just. Um, seem tired in those points, right, at, at certain books, just because of, you know, you, you've been writing the same characters in the same world for a long time. The series doesn't have that problem, really. I mean, you do have a character that you're evolving throughout the series, but you, you can go to different worlds, you can do different things, you can go through different themes, plot, like, everything can be different, every time. That's my hope. And yeah. That's what, I, uh, that's what I hope I get to explore for several more books to come. Yeah. Good luck, man. I, that sound that sounds fantastic. So, um, what else? Are, what else is going on with you at this point in time? Well, um, this fall I will be writer in residence at the Saskatoon Public Library, which is always a nice gig. I did it once before at the Regina Public Library. Um, so that's I'll be spending. They, they pay me. I get an actual paycheck for like eight months, which is really cool. And I spend forty percent of my time working with. Uh, local writers who want to come in and show me you know, what they're working on and I offer suggestions and answer questions, that sort of thing. And then the 60% of my time I spend on my own projects and the, the main project I'll be working on during that time um, Cheezine is going to publish a dark YA fantasy uh, involving shapeshifters uh, which I need to write. So <laughs> that's, what, that's what I will be writing, uh, working on primarily over that time. Plus of course Whatever's going on with World Shaper, I'll have to be working on that as well. And I also have a middle grade book out uh, with my agent that's making the rounds right now. So I have I have hope for that. It, it's called The Fire Boy, and it involves uh, elementals. So nice. Mm-hmm. A few things like that out there are about to be written. And I've got you know more ideas than you can. Yeah. Like most writers, it's, ideas aren't a problem. It's just finding time to write everything. Well, yeah, and they and they're also the kind of like the uh, as one of my writer friends are they're like kids in the car. Like there's the the one beside you that you're working on, and then there's like three or four in the back that are just trying to yell at you for attention all the time. It's like, what about me? What about me? It's like, but I'll get to you. Yeah. I promise. I get to you. And sometimes you sometimes you don't, and it sucks because there are sometimes you have some gems. Sometimes though, you can slip ideas in though into your other stories, especially if you know you're not going. It's like I can't tell a full story with you. But maybe I can combine you with this one and and make it work. Sometimes it happens. Yeah. World Shaper is a great would is a great series for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for getting ideas out there, or just having fun. One of the best things about it, from my point of view, is that it's largely not entirely, but largely written in first person. Uh, and uh, that to indulge in my own sense of humor, which I hope is a selling point. <laughs> uh, I, I tend to work. Tend to wordplay and puns. <laughs> well, I, I did that. Like my first science fiction novel is just about done. I'm going to be announcing a release date on it really, really soon. I'm, I'm doing this one independently. Um, the idea is it's Indiana Jones meets the Matrix. So most of my world takes place in basically a random generator dungeon. I don't know how much of a video gamer you are, but oh, I have been in the past. Yeah. Do you remember the old video games where the dungeons you'd go into would be completely randomly generated? Yeah. Right. The, the the main place they go into is a completely random generated world. So every time I, they go in, right, it's different, right? It just it just evolves. It's the nature of the place it evolves. So I get to do, I get to play out all my like um, homages to video games 
in there as as well as every kind of crazy idea I possibly can throw in there. It's like, I can make this a kitchen sink. Let's just do it and see what happens. And it works because of the nature of the world I've built. And uh, first person is the best for that, I find, because um, it's almost like when you're doing stuff like this, it's like you're discovering. Like, you, 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 it allows the reader to discover the cool things about your world like you do. And I think I think that's the cool thing about first person. Third person, don't get me wrong, is very good. I, I definitely see why in fantasy, in particular, that's usually the way they, they explain worlds and stuff like that. But there is something to be said about that discovery part of first person that makes you go, this is really cool. I don't know, maybe you agree, disagree on that? Well, they all have their place. Yeah. The challenge with first person is, of course, that if you are entirely in first person, you can never tell the reader anything that's happening anywhere except where that person is. And the one reason that World Shapers is not entirely first person is because it has third person sections from uh, another character, the one that came into, Shauna Keys is the main character, came into her world and basically got her started on this. And there's also sections from the bad guy's point of view. Mm -hmm. those, are in, those are in third person, and then the bulk of it is in first person. And that's just, a, that's just because I needed occasionally to be able to give a viewpoint that was not that first person character's viewpoint so it's all a technical thing it just depends on how the story has to be told uh, absolutely well for me because it's it's a it's kind of in the future i use so, the social media feed as plot so I, I, uh, I that was my way that was my way around that because it was like well if i have a social media feed going on all the time right i can use that to actually explain details in the world that the main character would never tell you because I, as you say the big limitation with first person is you can't you can't really do plot with the first person. It doesn't feel believable when you do that. But if you put if you have a place where you can put the plot, right, it lets it gives it gives readers a chance to play along and also maybe know some information that the first per, that the your main character doesn't, which sometimes is a lot of fun. So this, this is only the second book I've uh, well it's now two books, but the second time first person. Um, the only other one was a young adult novel from years ago called uh, Andy Nebula Interstellar Rockstar and uh, that one was first person but otherwise I've done a third person usually third person it varies multiple viewpoint books but I've also done third person from a single viewpoint which is almost like first person but not quite although it still has the same limitation in that you can only uh, talk about what the character is seeing if you're really tightly in that person's head um but for some reason, that book didn't feel to me that it, it would work well in first person. I liked it in third person. So it's just, I don't know. Uh, this is one of the things we talk about on my podcast. You know, all this, these nuts and bolts, are they're interesting to, to talk about. And they're, they're, all, they're all writing problem. Yeah. And which one you choose depends on how you want the story to be presented and how you want the reader to experience it. Yeah, which, which is ultimately what we do when we tell stories is we're trying to create an experience that a reader will remember. That's the goal, anyway. So, That's the goal. Yeah. Well, it's, it sounds like, man, you got a lot going on for you, and congratulations on everything you're doing. That, that sounds Thank great. You. It sounds great. So, I think we have a good interview here. What do you think? It sounded good to me. Okay, sounds great for you. No earthquakes, so no rumble noises. I, I was actually disappointed, because when you told me there would be construction, I was I was expecting, like, the dun 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 and it's like, no. The house did actually shake a couple of times while we were interviewing it, but I guess it wasn't picked up by the mic, so that's good. No, it wasn't. So you, you survived an earthquake then, I guess. I don't know. Anyways, um, how about this? So why don't you promote your podcast? Your Do you know when the uh, book dudes come out? What, you said September? September 10th. Yeah. yeah, Yeah. so why don't you promote your book, your podcast, and how people can find you? Okay. Uh, well, the next book is Master of the World. It comes out from Daw Books and Trade Paperback, ebook and audiobook on September 10th. Uh, the first book in the series, World Shaper, will be out in Mass Market Paperback 4th, I think, somewhere along there. Uh, it's already out in uh, Trade Paperback, ebook and audiobook. Uh, you can find uh, me online in various places. My podcast, The World Shapers, is at theworldshapers.com and on Twitter at The World Shapers. You can find me at my main website, which is edwardwillett.com. Two T's on Willett, W-I-L-L-E-T-T. -T. I always have to say that because the second T gets dropped all the time. Uh, I'm on Twitter at E. Willett. I'm on Facebook at edward.willett. And uh, what else? I have an online store where you can order autographed books. That's edwardwilletshop.com. And, uh, oh yeah, and I have my own little 
press called Shadow Paw Press, named after our cat. That's at shadowpawpress.com. And I do have a collection of short stories and a reprint of one of my YA novels I put out through that. So that's another place to check me out. But if you go to edwardwillett.com, all my books are listed there. Excellent. This podcast for the month this month is sponsored by Third Space. It is a comedy world building podcast in which your host Kevin Weir and Jeremy Berkeley create worlds based on tropes and concepts from movies, television, video games, books, and more. What does that mean exactly? It means you can expect worlds where humans level up, mascots are real, animals grant wretched, and Skeletor wants you to rise up against the bourgeois. Why? Just because. It's also home to the Third Space World Generator, where using the power of the RN Jesus from the internet, Kevin and Jeremy create brand new worlds from scratch. Third Space can be found on thirdspacepodcast.com or on the podcast app of your choice. And that was my conversation with Edward Willett. Ed uh, has a podcast, like I said, World Shapers Podcast. Check it out on his site. He's had some great guests. Ed, thanks very much for coming on my show, man. You're welcome back anytime you want always a pleasure to have you uh the auroras i have closed i'm don't know if i want or not i'm like I said, i'm in a really really good headspace i i have an aurora and i'm really proud of the aurora i've won and i would not be opposed to winning another one but if i don't honestly it's great just to be nominated um i might actually win the category and i wouldn't be shocked if he did but if um if it is me again, cool. If it's, if it's Ed, it's cool. If it's Dustin Biko, it's cool. If it's Claire Marshall, it's cool. I'm I. The list is really good. If it's Carrie Moran. That'd be cool too. I'm very happy with the list that's there in my category. It's an amazing class this year, in a variety of things. I cannot wait to see who wins, and uh, who meets some of the finalists when I go to CanCon in Ottawa. I'm looking forward to meeting Marie Billado for the first time in person. Marie is awesome. I really, really dig her, and I kind of wish I had been able to interview her for the the series this time around, but uh, maybe I get to interview her in person. I I hope I get that opportunity. Um, Yeah, like I said, now I'm just packing, getting stuff ready. Um, I have two big boxes of books ready to be um, eliminated. Um, Purging books is a, a big part of what I'm doing this week. Uh, I already know what I'm keeping. I already know what I'm getting rid of. Uh, it's it's sad, it's bittersweet, but it's also exciting because when you let go, new things come your way. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing new things coming my way. And that'll do it for this episode of Just Joshing. If you want to support the podcast, you can do so a number of different ways. My sponsors, check out the Third Space Podcast. Check out Claudio Morgan, his books, Water Entanglement and Decadence of Souls. Uh, Decadence of Souls is currently up for giveaway, so if you want to actually go for it, send me your email. And the email us provided below, I definitely can enter this week for that. Um, Third Space Podcast, Kevin Kevin Weir, Jeremy Berkeley. Jeremy Berkeley's doing the voiceovers now. Um, you hear most of them. Great, great show. Definitely check them out. Uh, my merchandise, jpentelresco.redbubble.com. You want the Sparkle Sparkle t-shirt? It's available for sale now. Uh, you can subscribe to my podcast, Podomatic, Google Play, Spotify, iTunes. I'm on all those platforms and more. Um, definitely check those out. My YouTube is Joshua Pentelaresco. My Instagram and Twitter is at jpentelaresco. My books, The Watcher, Storm, Dancer, Wander, and God, are available at Marrow Publishing very soon. The Cloud Diary will be available on Amazon, Kobo, and all platforms worldwide. More stay tuned for that to come. Al Zero will follow shortly thereafter. But above all else, thanks for listening. Stay inspired. Keep doing your thing. And I'll see you guys this Friday. Josh, Josh.